Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. I'm back with, uh, I think this is the fourth in our series on Native Instruments, uh, Reactor's New School. And in this video, we'll go through this horizontal bar that's at the bottom of the sequencer here and um, learn about these controls. So let's start over here on the left. Now this preset section is probably unlike most preset sections you're used to. It's not, it's not really a um, collection of different configurations for the device that have been devised by the device's creator. This is in fact a collection of these different patterns that are known to occur and known to exist in John Conway's life model. And for this purpose it's really helpful to go over to this um, Wikipedia entry on Conway's Game of Life. It has this section of examples of patterns and it will kind of give you a sense for how these were discovered, what they do. Generally the case is that uh, they do what they say they're gonna do. So spaceships for example a glider will glide across the performer display. A blinker just kind of blinks. You get the idea. Um, and if you read deeper into this, there's some kind of interesting stuff. There's one pattern that a guy discovered that goes, I think, 34 million generations. Uh, and it creates and destroys itself in that process. So it gets pretty deep. And if you have a lot of time on your hands, you may want to get into this. But let's go back to Reactor and uh, give some of these patterns a whirl. So there's four simple gliders preset is the first that we have available and in order to in order to select and load these first of all you have to click on the title bar or this up down arrow and drag up or down and then you have to hit cl click load over here now now notice one thing uh, which I guess isn't evident here but when you load some of these other ones it, it imports with its own grid size, and this grid size here, this X size Y, is just the size of the X and Y axes on this grid. So you see you can lower and raise these, and sometimes that's helpful for getting a, a different sound. Because once you play around with these, you'll realize that you can change these in real time and, and come up with some kind of cool patterns. Anyway, let's give a sound, let's give a listen to how this sounds. I'm going to load that over to the performer display. So as advertised, these gliders are basically gliding across a performer display. But here's the thing, we have it set to loop here in our copy field. And you'll recall that in the last video, we talked about these different controls. If you forgot what those are, go back to the last one and check it out. But you can see that it's looping. If we set this, click and drag down and go to start, that will uh, allow the pattern to complete, to continually apply the life rules without ever starting over. And so when it does that, we'll see that it behaves differently. And these gliders will proceed to the outer edges of the performer display, and I think they'll move their way back in. But, uh, so you can see there are different ways to do this. Now let's take a look at um, some of these other patterns. What do we have? There's one in here I think that goes on. Our pentomino that uh, Conway discovered early on in his in his research it fails to stabilize it takes 1103 generations to stabilize and in fact good folks at Native Instruments have included this in the group of, uh, of patterns where is it here I think it's there it is so if we get going with this one now let's start over because I think it's going to continually go with the glider. So, our pentomino. Let's hear this. So, I, I assume you guys don't want to sit around here for 1103 patterns or however long it takes. But you get the idea. So, some of these become very intricate. Let's move over. We've already covered grid size. But I want to draw your attention here. So, you know that you have to load these. After you select them, you have to load them. And of course, next here is this the clear button, which does what it says. And then there's a randomized button, which can be kind of handy. Just creating completely random patterns. Um, generally pretty chaotic. Okay, enough of that. Let's go over to this XY wrap control. I'm going to clear this out. And this XY wrap control, I think, is one of the trickier controls in, in this ensemble. Because what XY wrap, X wrap Y, I don't even know how you say it. But it controls how the uh, the patterns are projected onto the oscillators down here and you'll see you can see very faintly here if I lower the grid size 
so that there are fewer of these cells on here, you can see that um, each of these has a slightly different color. And as far as I understand, I could be dead wrong on this, but as far as I understand it, each of these colors corresponds to one of the eight oscillators. And so if you draw a pattern in and you get going, um, it'll start going. Now let's lower the BPM a little bit so that we're not as, quite as frenetic here. And so these are all triggering, the cells that they're triggering correspond to the colors of these oscillators. Now, God, that's annoying. If I, uh, I'm gonna take out some of this so it's not quite as annoying. If I start changing these parameters, you'll notice a couple things. And I'm gonna do this without the sound first. If I start moving this X, X uh, parameter, you can see that the colors are changing. And what that's doing is changing this, the assignment of that cell onto the oscillator. Now this is kind of hard, I mean it's kind of hard to visualize and I'm not sure if there's an easier way to do this. If there is, please someone leave a comment or tell me that, um, tell me how to do this. But basically there's, you know, each of these in tandem control what the assignments of the performer display cells are onto the oscillators. And so really, you know, the only way to really do this is to get in and start turning the knobs and figuring out what, what they're doing. And if you want, you can kind of do it on a very minimal scale and see exactly which oscillators are being triggered. But if you just listen, you can tell, let's load a different, uh, different snapshot. Asteroids. Oh jeez, that level's too high. So here we have a much larger grid. Now if I start to change this, you see that now the assignments are changing. And if I change it in conjunction with changing the Y parameter, you can see if you look back, it's kind of like one of these, um, you remember those posters back in the late 90s where you'd look at them and you had to blur your eyes to see, it was like, you know, this computer generated art. There's a Seinfeld episode about one of those. Um, it's one of these where you have to kind of look at it with your eyes blurred to see how the assignments are changing. But suffice it to say that these alter the assignments that the, that the, the, the oscillator assignments that these cells are using. Now, I hope that wasn't too boring. I'm sorry if it was confusing. Offset is another one of these offset controls that essentially does what it says. It provides an offset to the, the time of the uh, triggering. So, lastly, this, this kind of not very important looking control over here is actually one of the more important ones. And uh, they call this sensibility. I'm not, I think it's maybe meant to be sensitivity. I don't know. But what it does is it controls the density of the triggered sounds. And it's kind of a notch control. So if you set this low, it won't trigger, it, it will trigger a certain number of sounds. But once you begin to raise it, it becomes a much more dense pattern. So this is a good control for determining the density of your pattern. I mean, maybe you want something very sparse, if you're doing something kind of minimal and glitchy, this is going to be the control you're, you'll want to use. So, again, uh, thanks for joining me on this. This has been Sequencer Controls Part 2 for Native Instruments Reactors New School. I hope this has been enlightening to you. I know it's a little bit confusing. But uh, as I always recommend, just get in, start digging around and, and turning the knobs and so forth. And, and you'll start to get your head around this. So in the next one, we'll move down to this, uh, the sound de generator, which is the tone engine here in the multi-effects unit. And I hope you'll join me for that. I uh, hope you guys have a good one. I'll talk to you again soon. Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Take care. See ya.